Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this and that. So this will be my first video, first episode about Ukraine, and it's called This is Ukraine. Not surprised, I guess. So um, I am Ukrainian. I was born in Ukraine. I lived there for quite some time, although I lived in other countries. Ukraine is still my home with a lot of friends, a lot of family, a lot of beautiful people. And in this episode, I want to tell you everything about Ukraine before I tell you what exactly happened and what's happening to it right now. So right now I want to tell you of how I left Ukraine and why I left Ukraine and basically how it was when I left it. So what I would like to say first of all is that uh, this little series about Ukraine is going to be about two, three episodes long. Uh, I'll try not to drag too much because there's already a lot of information on the internet that you can find out. So I'll give you just my point of view, how I left Ukraine, what the country is like, and why the Ukraine, the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian soldiers are so vigorously defending the country. And you will know right now why it is so. So I feel obliged. I feel like it's my responsibility by having a YouTube channel, a Twitch channel, etc. I feel it's my responsibility to shed more light on this and uh, hopefully maybe make some of you donate to our army. I really, really hope so because we need all the help we can get. We have the people, but we don't have the guns. Sometimes people is enough and this is what we've been showing to the world that sometimes just enough people is enough to protect what belongs to you, what you love, people you love, the country you love. So let's not take too long and get started. As you can see on the map, this is Ukraine. It is a huge country. It is massive, to be honest. It's one of the biggest country in Europe, or let's say Eastern Europe. It is a clear divider between Russia and NATO and the European Union. So as you might imagine, this is why it all started, but we'll get to that in the second episode. Let me start telling you about my country. And probably the first thing that you heard or the first thing that I hear people saying when I ask them about Ukraine, do you know about Ukraine? What do you know about Ukraine? The first thing they say is that we have beautiful women. And that is 100% true. If you look at some statistics on the internet, you might find that um, the most beautiful women, it's arguable, it, it, it's a competition between Brazilian and Ukrainian. Uh, I can see why Brazilian women uh, might be in the first place. They have just gorgeous bodies, uh, but so do you, Ukrainian women. I can't say personally that uh, either one of them is better than the other because I have never met a Brazilian woman actually in my whole life, which is strange a bit to me. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about the Ukrainian women, something that I do know. Yes, they are beautiful. These are our Ukrainian women and they're fantastic. They're some of the most beautiful women in Ukraine. You can... Any woman that you see and she is gorgeous and she's Eastern European, she's probably Ukrainian or most definitely Ukrainian or her grandmother is Ukrainian or her grand grandma is Ukrainian. You know, there's got to be something Ukrainian. Let's, for example, M Mila Jovovich, you know, she's a beautiful woman, a great actress, you know, and she is Ukrainian. Uh, to no surprise. Yes, Ukrainian women are beautiful. But not only that they're beautiful, they're actually extremely, extremely smart. They, all of them, probably finished in university. All of them are working extremely hard. I would probably even argue that Ukrainian women work harder than Ukrainian men do. You know, and... Uh, 
by saying this is a man's world, when you go to Ukraine, you wouldn't say that because women, you know, they take what, what belongs to them. They take what's theirs. They deserve it. They're really, really hardworking, extremely intelligent and extremely family oriented. So this is one of the reasons why so many foreigners actually go on uh, dating websites and Ukrainian websites and visit Ukraine to find themselves a wife because in their country, you know, they say that women are too stuck up and too demanding for, you know, things that they don't even deserve. And I'm actually talking about uh, mostly American men who I have met who came to Ukraine for to find a wife. Uh, because they just simply cannot find what they're looking for in America. And they are not the kind of men that you might think that have nothing to offer. No, no, no. On the contrary. You know, if you fly halfway around the world and spend one and a half, couple of thousand dollars, you know, just to Ukraine, just to go to Ukraine to find a wife, you know, definitely you're well off and you're doing good. So there must be something wrong there. But yes, back to the women, hardworking, beautiful, super smart, and they should be the sole reason that we should defend our country and our sovereignty because these women bring joy and happiness into anybody's life. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, they're understanding, they're, they're gorgeous, they're super smart, they'll help you out with your business, whatever you're trying to reach, they will support you, they will love your children, they will never let them down. And they are, they, they should be enough just to protect our country from the invader. So this is my first point. Now that we are, now that we uh, have passed <laughs> the most important point, the women, let's get to something else. Let's have a look first, actually. As you can see here, I just wrote Ukrainian women. And as you can see, there's so many beautiful ones on these pictures, just, just random women, really. Here are some of our Ukrainian soldiers, women, women soldiers, also beautiful women fighting for our country. They don't deserve this. They're just, they, they just should enjoy their time at home, looking after children, or if not children, just, you know, following their career, just enjoying their time and not facing the death and destruction that the Russian government is bringing upon us yes so this also mostly goes out to all of you ukrainian women i love you very much you know i do all the women that i know they know how much i love them how much i respect them and what they really all mean to me in my heart let's continue the second thing I wanted to talk about is are the activities that you can do in Ukraine. Judging by the size of the country, you can already imagine that there's so many things to do, but you actually have no clue how amazing and beautiful it really is. Let's start with something quite simple, maybe something you heard of, which is Bukovel. Bukovel is a resort that we have in our mountains. It's right here near Ivano-Frankovsk. Let's give it a try. Let's try and find it. It's got to be somewhere here. Um, I think if we search it, it'll be easier. There we go. We already have it in our search. This is Bukovel right here, situated in the Carpathian Mountains, next to the city Ivano-Frankovsk. See, there is this great mountain range. And this place is just amazing. I wouldn't say it's cheap. Well, all of the, all of the ski resorts aren't cheap, right? So let's give them that, at least. I want to show you some of the photos that are here on Google. You can look at them yourself. 
I've been there with my brother. We've been there for a week or 10 days or so. We've been skiing. It was absolutely fantastic. This is actually what it looks like. This um, little area, well, not little, it's quite a big area. It's called Bukaville. This is what it looks like in summer. This is what it looks like in winter. You know, I can show you these pictures forever. There's so many. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country and a beautiful resort. So the mountain ranges are awesome. You can go skiing. You can go hiking. You can go hiking in the winter. You can mountain climb. We have a lot of very, very steep mountains that are difficult to climb. And a lot of people come to Ukraine just to do that. So this is the countryside that is being destroyed by the Russian army at this moment. This is one of the things that we vigorously have to defend. Uh, these pictures are on Google. You can find them by yourself. It's pretty easy. Uh, I want to show you some of the photos that, uh, that my friends made. Uh, which are not Google Photos. So these are real actual photos of our friends going hiking and going skiing. Uh, not too many, but just so you know, like if you come to Ukraine and you visit these places, you will be able to take these pictures easily anywhere because the whole country is green and beautiful and fantastic. This is my friend Artem. He loves hiking. He just loves any outdoor activity, to be honest. He just goes crazy about it. So as you can see, it's fantastic. It's gorgeous. And a government is trying to claim this for themselves. No, this belongs to the people. There is no way we're going to give it away. So this is Bukovel. This is what I have to say about the mountains that we have in Ukraine. There are other activities. There's so many activities, to be honest. I'm just going to go through the main ones that I really personally enjoy and my friends enjoy, just so you can, you know, get a feel of what we like to do and, and what you could do when you come for a visit, when we actually free a country, which we will. So yes, this is Bukavel. Mm, let me show you some of the other activities that we like to do. Uh, we love going to the shooting range. In Ukraine, there is a number of shooting ranges, open ones, closed ones. You can shoot pretty much any gun you like. Um, AKs, M16s, the, probably the only thing you can't shoot is a bazooka. But yes, you can ride a tank in Ukraine. It is uh, an activity which you can order. It's quite expensive, but if I'm not mistaken, you can you can grab a tank, you can shoot some cars with it, then you can drive over the cars with it. And then when you're done with driving the tank, you can get out of the tank, grab an AK and shoot those like broken cars with the AK. You know, it's just a ridiculously fun activity. I've never tried it, to be honest, uh, because just a regular shooting range is more than enough for me. <laughs> but yes, you can even drive a tank in Ukraine for fun, you know. Um, which probably you can't do in any country in the world, but you can do it in Ukraine. Um, the shooting range, I personally love shooting. Uh, we, we would go there almost every week, just pick up some random guns and see how, how they handle and what they are. Uh, this is the range that we would go to. It's, it's an amazing place. And this is Artem. Actually, we came this day to shoot some AKs. So this is uh, the instructor basically explaining the ways of how you can reload the AK. Uh, it's, it's a nice video. This is Artem going at it. We decided, OK, it's time to go shoot the AK. This is a 7.62 caliber, not a, not a 5.54 or whatever is 5.56. So the biggest caliber AK, yeah. This is how sometimes we have fun on the weekend. We just go, you know, when somebody's maybe a little bit angry or pissed off at their boss or something, you know, just go there, <laughs> pretend this is your boss and just shoot him a few times. But I guess there is shooting ranges in every, um, 
in every country, but not, not to the extent that we have it in Ukraine. They're pretty much all the available. There's all snipers available, Desert Eagles, you know, ev everything, everything, everything. It's just incredibly fun and amazing. You should definitely give it a try when you come for a visit. So mountain climbing, skiing. Let me show you something else. There's also uh, different camps, summer camps and winter camps. So one of the summer camps that I went to, it is a musical, musical slash, um, uh, how would you say it uh, in Ukraine? Um, sport slash musical summer camp. It is done every summer. It's called Sun Trip. And I've been there and it's just unbelievable. Uh, the place is great. The people, the people who arrange it is amazing. There's a number of groups going every time. One group goes, it leaves, then another group comes. So it's like a one month, two months event, which is just fantastic. You wake up in the morning uh, to morning exercise. After the morning exercise, everybody has breakfast. Breakfast is served. It's included. After that, you have some TRX. You know, TRX are the it's the company that made these uh, like grips with strings that you can hang and do different exercises you by hanging, whatever. So you have TRX and then you will have some master class that will teach you uh, how to ride uh, a waterboard or, or how to kite surf or how to surf or how to use a sap, a sap board. Just anything that you can imagine are fit in those two weeks where you're just gonna have your mind blown away. And there is uh, like your disco uh, in the evening when everybody's already done with all the sports activities. There's card games, there's board games. So this camp is just crazy. If you go there, you will never forget about it. There is yoga. See, th this is TRX, as, as I've said. The, the hanging ropes. So this is TRX, also a type of exercise. I know most of these people uh, on the photos. They're just amazing, fantastic people. Uh, this is loading very poorly. This is morning exercise. This is like eight in the morning. Yoga, usually closer to the afternoon. Um, you have just people going crazy, you know, just having fun, just enjoying their time. You don't have to do any of that. You know, you can, you can just come there and just be drunk all the time if you wish, or you can just do sports or you don't have to do any of it. Nobody will care, but everybody will love you and welcome you for whatever it is you're doing. See how beautiful it is. This is, it's right on the beach, right on the sea. In the morning, the dolphins come really close. This is Ukraine. This is this is not some somewhere in India, Goa or something. No, no, we have this in Ukraine. Everybody does this every year in Ukraine. And this is not the only summer camp that you can go to. You know, adults with their children go. They sleep in tents. It's just so much fun. It's so much nature. So much entertainment is just fantastic. And and the dolphins, they make everything just awesome we wake up in the morning to go do your exercise or have breakfast and you see dolphins swimming by just i don't know 10 meters away from the shore it's just an unexplainable feeling to be honest it's just fantastic like you're like you're in heaven so yeah this is sun trip our beautiful girls a lot of people actually from other countries Israel, Bulgaria, Belarus, they all come for this summer camp. They don't go to Turkey or, or Egypt or any of those because nothing compares to our Ukrainian summer camps. Let me just show you a few pictures, maybe a few videos of, of yes, this. You also wake up to this, you know, people just flying on kites right next to you and it's mental. It's really mental. Somebody's doing exercise. Somebody's flying. There's a dolphin. 
there is there is uh, just people drinking maybe somebody is sleeping since uh, yesterday evening somewhere you know next to some tent or something because he passed out there it's just amazing you know people were truly living their life to the max they were really enjoying it everything was fantastic that's what that's how i was leaving ukraine where everything was awesome so these are about our activities you can go climbing hiking uh, rafting uh, there we go i have some pictures ready for you of rafting see the white water rafting is just wonderful these are all real pictures of my friends taking the pictures all of them this is dasha sitting right there i don't know who's there in the water maybe our tom uh, this big guy sitting on the boat is Andrew. He is the, the he's the coach for this whole thing. Just fantastic. Look at the views. Just just look at it. It's just unarguably the most amazing place in Ukraine. Okay, this video doesn't want to doesn't want to play, so I'll play it through a different player. You can go yachting if you wish to. And proper yachting with with a sail, of course with an engine. This is me sitting with the GoPro. <laughs> it's wonderful. This is actually in Kiev, in the center of Kiev. There is uh, the river goes through the center of Kiev. As you can see, the bridges are connecting the left bank and the right bank, and we're just sailing on an amazing boat with with an amazing captain you know for a great price uncomparably to any other country to be honest and just enjoying our time you know this is my ex-girlfriend <laughs> yeah th this is beautiful ukraine is fantastic also you can just grab your stuff find a place which is deserted and nobody's there and you can just enjoy your time there by yourself look at this a forest next to a beach next to a river look how gorgeous it is it's just spectacular i even had to buy a boat i had to buy a boat so that i can do all of this stuff you know with, with my brother and my friends look at this this is ukraine there is no terrorists there is no nazis there is no haters there is nothing of the sort <laughs> you know this is ukraine here i want to show you uh, this is sun trip the summer camp i told you about this is the evening where everybody just want to go let loose a little bit you know have a little fun smoke some hookah you know have a drink dance a little bit before going to sleep and preparing for the next day also, we have Atlas Weekend. Atlas Weekend is this huge, massive festival with millions of people coming, okay? And the best DJs, the best um, artists, everybody comes and it's in a huge, massive park with 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 dozens of stages where, where different performers are, are performing. And I want to show you a recording which Artem did. I, I don't know where my recording is of The Prodigy, which I've been to like a few years back, but I do have a recording of Artem going for uh, Fat Boy Slim, which you probably know. This is Fat Boy Slim. This was just last year. Yes, this was just no. This was this year or last year. Anyway, this this is so recent, before war came to our country. Look, look at the people. How, look how many people there is. This is in a park under the open sky. Fat boy slim playing. What else would anybody want? Nothing really. Uh, also, uh, some images from the center of Ukraine, right next to the river. As I showed you earlier, we were on the on the yacht driving there, uh, sw swimming there, or whatever, however you call it. And this is just another day us sitting in a restaurant, having some food to eat, bridge going over the river and some fireworks just going crazy. Maybe somebody's having a party or a birthday or there's an event happening. God knows what. You will always find something to do. 
even if you just go out in five minutes you will find something to do there will be some activity you will never ever get bored it's impossible to get bored in the country i myself am a gamer i love playing games i love sitting at home i love sitting by the computer in five years in the last five years that i was in ukraine i barely sat by the computer at all there is ju it's just so much more interesting living in real life rather than by the computer and that's because you're in ukraine it's mental honestly just remember my words come for a visit you will not regret it i guarantee you uh let's continue i've showed you some of the activities that you can do in ukraine let's talk about the people and the nightlife the people the women is 50 percent of why we're supposed to defend ukraine the activities are 25 percent of why we're supposed to protect ukraine and then the people are the other 25 percent that why we're supposed to protect ukraine you see when you go out in ukraine uh, in the evening on a weekend you will meet a lot of people and i mean a lot of people and they're all super friendly you might go with one group you might leave with another group you know you might meet some people and become best friends in the end people will come up to you randomly and just speak to you as if they know you you feel absolutely 100 percent comfortable around these people they wish you no harm you know of course like in every country like in any nation some people get a little bit too drunk and start making a fuss but that's everywhere don't think ukraine is like that where everybody's drunk and everybody goes crazy absolutely not everybody's super friendly super helpful they love you they will share their stories with you they, they will give you a cigarette they'll buy you a drink even though most of the people are not super rich or super well off but they will help you out in whatever way they can they're just absolutely fantastic if you treat them well they treat you even better caribbean club one of the best places that i would love to go to in the evening these guys would know me by my voice when i would call them and ask them if there's tables av available or what's going on they would say hey Oleg, is that you it's like yeah yeah come i'll get you a nice table la 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 and this is just because i treated them with respect nothing more i would have my own personal way to who I, I, I would just disagree to be served by anybody else because he was amazing and he would just serve my table and everybody knew would know that even if it's not his area he would still serve me because nobody would tell him no as long as everybody's happy the service in ukraine is amazing if you think that you want something you will have a waiter or a waitress already standing next to you and suggesting that i don't know it's like they can read your mind it's just absolutely fantastic this place is actually a restaurant which is a concert hall which is a nightclub you know you start at 6 6 p.m it's a restaurant then at 8 becomes a concert hall and at 11 12 becomes a nightclub uh this is this is the nightlife that i want to show you look you can go for jazz for adults this is what's happening now still while during war everybody's still trying to circulate money in the government you know to not let the the economy crumble you know everybody's super hard working and and doing whatever they can to keep the country going to keep the country running so some jazz there's plays there's music by frank sinatra you know this is just recent as you can see september 7 september 8 poems more acting um more acting charity stand-up shows you know it's just incredible obviously the list was a little bit more diverse <laughs> when we weren't at war but still you have to give it to them you know these people are amazing they're they're 
they're they're helping people forget and survive nightclub nightclub isn't working now and why is it not working because curfew after 11 what can we do about that well not much i guess we'll have to stick to concerts anyway point being costa chain of restaurants great the one if you go to in the capital in in the main street in khrishatik wow the service the people the the every the atmosphere you know you, you just sit down and and you have fashion tv playing on the screen great music playing well dressed well night nice and tidy waiters who will read your mind and tell you what you want and suggest something and just be super kind and amazing like just by saying this you know <laughs> i have tears rolling up to my eyes because i miss this these people don't deserve what is happening to them right now the burger you go to the burger yes it's it's like a fancy expensive burger place right in the center you know in the arena arena mall or whatever it, it is called but when you go there you're not just surprised by the quality of the food you're surprised by the staff i don't know how they hire but they hire people who are just full of tattoos long beards looking cool piercings you know and when when you look at them you're like wow dude you look so cool and you know your food's so cool and and they make jokes and they talk to you in like a, a, a way like you're their buddy you know and they're just laughing and joking it's just i don't know I, I i can't believe that somebody would say we are supposed to be denazified or some some crap like that it's ridiculous it's, it's really it's really nuts like th this place is just ukraine is the best of the best countries ever you know this <laughs> you didn't have to free it from anything to be honest so yeah i'm sorry i might be getting a bit off topic or maybe talking about everything a little too fast uh if you have any comments about me trying to make this video or trying to make this first episode about ukraine if you have any comments please do put them yes thank you for the support if you're going to write something nice thank you very much and i'm also very interested in negative feedback which is usually the best feedback so please do put a comment or something if you didn't like something or if i should change something about this uh, just let me know so let's continue let's continue we've talked about the women we talked about the activities we've talked about the nightlife and how people get together uh also i want to talk to you uh, a little bit about uh, some of the some of the people that have came to visit uh ukraine in to find a wife so i used to work in a dating agency a good dating agency a real dating agency as you can imagine some of them are quite crazy scams where there is no actual woman it's just a model you know taking pictures they she gets paid for those pictures and then it's uploaded to a website and somebody's chatting to these men looking for wives you know but it's not actually the girl chatting is just somebody trying to scam them well i actually worked in an organ in a company that had the real women that were actually looking for husbands i ended up having three american friends uh they uh, did not find uh a woman they were looking for which is fine you know uh, you don't pick the first one that you get but what they did find they found me and they found ukraine so they would come to ukraine every single year after that just to come and have some fun just to come and see me come enjoy the nature come enjoy the nightlife and while doing that along the way hopefully you find a wife and these are and this is this should tell you a lot about ukraine that you might come there for something but you will fall in love with absolutely everything that ukraine has to offer it's beautiful in every way so let's talk about the government a little bit uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail 
This is our current president. Thank God he's our current president because he's actually people. He is not a politician. He's not a criminal. He's not a gangster. He's none of that crap that we were left with from the 90s. Okay, the previous president, not going to say much. I voted for the previous one as well because he was way better than the crap we had before that. He wasn't super amazing. Some people think he was good. He was a businessman. Not a really good one, I guess. But anyway, all I wanted to say is that after 2014, our government became good. It started caring about the people. And this is when the country just exploded. It's, it, you can't even, everybody, everybody and anybody could make money with whatever skills they had. We didn't have this um, post-90s poor people with no jobs, criminals. Uh, you know, it all started to vanish because everybody had the opportunity to make money. This, this, we basically, Europe and freedom came to our country. I didn't have friends who couldn't find a job. I had friends who all of them could afford to do whatever they wanted to do because our jobs would pay well. They would pay well and the prices in Ukraine would be extremely low compared, uncomparable to Europe and even uncomparable to Russia and un, just uncomparable to many countries where you would have a good salary and your prices, the prices in the shops would be low because Ukraine is such a green country. We produce everything we produce all the food all the meat all the wheat all the greens everything 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 was in good supply great prices it was just absolutely fantastic people were buying iphones samsung's computers max you know everybody was traveling everybody was making money everybody was getting happier not by the minute not by the hour by the second the country was striving just it really exploded the economy exploded there was so many businesses you couldn't count them the president uh, even the government gave out uh what was it uh, credit um, uh, they gave out uh, what do you call them they gave out loans without percentages or with a five percent loan which doesn't increase to new starting businesses so there would be competitions of new fresh businesses for this government loan it 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 was nuts it was nuts you know many and many, some some of the people would say oh i want to go and work somewhere outside you know and trust me those were the people that are just not thinking straight because all of my surrounding people would say why would i go work outside if i'm getting paid more here and everything's cheaper here and everything is amazing here i'd go somewhere for a visit but i wouldn't trade my country to go work somewhere else it was nuts it, it was just really an explosion of wealth and happiness and and everybody was super kind it was just getting better and better and better and better until the shit hit until the shit hit the fan you know I am 100% sure also that uh, some of the, that this definitely was a partial cause of the Russian government to attack Ukraine is because they were getting jealous as well because we were doing so good and so much better than the surrounding countries. You know, so somebody had to put a stop to it. <laughs> well, they tried, but it didn't work. Yeah, so we've covered the women. We've covered the activities that you can do in Ukraine. We've covered the good government that we now have. Let me tell you some other things. Uh, I personally, me and my brother, we, uh, we even joined uh, a flight academy. 
uh, we joined the flight academy we finished the theory uh, we were going to do the flying but then my brother had to go to to do his exams so we kind of put that on pause after we finished the theory and we wanted to continue the practice you know we had to fly 45 hours and then i would have my pilot's license my private pilot private pilot's license yes so th that's 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 how crazy it was you, you could do anything you could even become a pilot if you wish to you can become a personal pilot if you want you know this there was just so many things that you could do and available for the people and the country was booming it's such a shame that it all went to crap so last but not least and this is also my obligation to you guys. I need to talk about the people. Not just the people, but my friends. This is the one thing that I can't stop thinking about, which makes me want to come back and fight in the front lines for my friends. I want to show you a little bit of the things that me and my friends used to do. I've already showed you some, but here are some of the activities that we would do together. We would go canoe, and this is not just your regular canoe, no. It's, a, it's an Olympic canoe, it's called the Dragon. It weighs around 200 kilos or something, made out of metal. And I just called many of my sports friends, you know, we sit in there with, with a captain who is a military guy, amazing guy. Uh, he was awesome. He was pushing us to the limits. And this is, this is how we had some fun. Here's a video also. This is me somewhere there in the white hat. And my brother is in the black hat. <laughs> It's hard work, you know, you have to stick, you know, you have to, you have to be in rhythm with your team. Otherwise you're letting everybody down. You know, the captain was pretty harsh on us. It was just amazing, amazing time. Um, here are my friends. Some of them, this isn't even most of them. This isn't even half of them. This is us going out in the woods next to my house uh, to sled, to snow sled or i don't know how you would say it in English. just sledding we went sledding in the forest it was an amazing time here's a video of that too <laughs> this is me and veronica veronica was a little bit scared to go alone so she's like come on alec you take me so this is me <laughs> you know showing her how it's done As you can see, there's many kids, families, you know, everybody's just having fun in the woods, just going nuts. This is pre pre New Year, just before New Year or after. I don't know. I don't even remember. Uh, here is another video. Okay, I think I need to. Yeah, here we go. So what we did was here. <laughs> this is very funny um i called everybody i'm like come on guys let's go have some fun you know we're gonna tie all the sleds and the tires and the, i don't know what to the car and we'll just drive around you know my block and you know, just have a blast <laughs> so this is what happens as soon as i move the car with everybody tied to it just watch this You see, this is a police vehicle. <laughs> so as soon as I tied my friends to the car and I started moving, I see a car coming towards me and I'm like, okay, I'll just wait until it passes, you know? So, <laughs> so it comes and it passes and I'm looking at it and it says police on the side. So the policeman stopped a reverse to me and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, don't get it the wrong way. It's like we're just having a little bit of fun. We're all grown up, you know, and it's like New Year. We want to just, you know, have a little fun. So he's like quietly just looking at me, you know, not saying anything. And I'm like, look, I understand. Just look at us. We're grown up and like we're not we haven't been drinking. We're not drunk. Everything's fine. He's still he's still quiet. 
So I'm like, okay, I understand you don't want me to do this, you know, like, but we really want to do this. So maybe if you want to do it safer, you know, I can tie them to your car. So he looks at me and he's like, so you're breaking the law and now you want me to break the law with you? And I'm like, no, you know, officer, I was just kidding. You know what I mean? We're super safe. So he just turns around, closes his window and drives away. <laughs> So yeah, this was super hilarious. But just to show you that even our police is human. They understand. They will see if you're a decent person and you're honestly not doing anything super wrong or super bad. They will forgive you. They'll let you go. You know, just be cool. Just don't do anything like, don't hurt anybody and you're fine. You can do whatever you want. Oh, here we go. This is this is the actual actual sledding going on. Let me forward it a little bit because there is a there is a fun bit somewhere. Yeah, some people fell. Hold on. Where is it? We were actually going pretty fast here, you know, about 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> so it is, it was a little dangerous, but I was super careful. I wouldn't turn fast. I wouldn't brake fast. So nobody actually crashes into my, so they don't crash into my vehicle. You know, it was super safe. We all enjoyed it. We did this multiple times over multiple evenings. And each time it was just amazing. You know, everybody had so much fun. I ended up, you know, inviting 30, 30 or more people to my house. It was just going crazy. It, it was amazing. These are my friends. This is, this is what I miss. And these beautiful, gorgeous people now have to suffer for nothing wrong they did. For some idiot saying that there is some Nazis there in our country. I've never, ever seen a Nazi dude in our country. I don't think I even saw bald guys who look like they could be Nazis. It's just ridiculous and it's bullshit. So, this goes out to all my friends. I love them very much. I love them very, very much. And I hope everything's going to be good. I know everything's going to be good. And I know everything's going to be fine. And this is basically how I left my country. Mm, I didn't just leave. My brother told me, hey, come to Oman, you know, let's let's open a business in Oman. Because I opened a tourist company in um, in Ukraine. And just as I was um, just as I was starting to move it uh, to expand it basically my brother said hey come to Oman let's let's bring people from Ukraine to Oman and let's be bring people from Oman to Ukraine and I was like yeah that's a great idea so you know I jumped up put everything kind of a hold in Ukraine came to Oman started doing all the paperwork and then Russia invades Ukraine so I kind of got screwed over really hard I'm sure like many many of you people did get screwed over by this situation but it's okay we'll fix it this was this is the site this is my site of my company that we wanted to you know combine uh, with ukraine see we had bukovel chernobyl mountain hiking truskavets for rehabilitation water activities and more and more and more and more and more there was so much more this is me and my friends. This is my brother. This is my friend Artem. This is Toma. As you can see, we are, we are the company owners. You can visit the website and see for yourself what it was like. So yeah, I came to Oman. Everything went to hell. Now I had to freeze all of this. I do still have the company working in Oman in case you want to come to Oman and uh, do some activities. I'll be glad to help you out with that. We have a yacht, we have safaris, we have we can go valleys, hiking, etc. 
but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Ukraine. So from a country that had everything going for it, everything was getting better. You know, it was basically like living the American dream, but living the Ukrainian dream. As one of the presidents said, I don't remember who it was, uh, an American president, he said, we're going to have a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage, you know. And this is what, what Ukraine was. It was the land of opportunity, the land of freedom, you know, just like America. And this is what pissed everybody off. And this is what, this is one of the reasons that made the, the Russian government invade Ukraine. Of course, there is other more prominent reasons, more obvious reasons, which for some reason people don't even know about. And we will cover that in episode two. So yes, this is a little introduction about my country. This is a little introduction about Ukraine. Don't you think it's great? What do you think? Leave a comment. Tell me if you'd like to visit. Tell me if you'd like some help arranging activities or something. Tell me if you want to help. Just say anything, to be honest. Uh, maybe you want some uh, more information about that. Tell me how I did in the video. If, if it was informational, ed educative, just anything really uh, it would be great for support for my support to support this channel to support my friends to support our country spread the word uh, we love you ukraine i love you my friends i love you even more my family i love you very much my cats i love them they're stuck there with my dad thanks for taking care of them I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I'll give you one next week, maybe a little earlier, but probably next week. I'm still getting the hang of doing this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, have a good evening. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in. Click that subscribe, follow, like, whatever you can click. Just click it because I got nothing. <laughs> and yes, thank you very much. Have a good day and bye-bye.